Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to episode five of Sideline Sports Podcast. I am the host, Alex Naveja, and again, we have James Williams, Mr. James H. Williams. That's right. Can, can, I almost forgot that age. And you almost, I almost forgot, too. I'm glad someone remembered here. So. I have to remember the age because, like we mentioned last week, mm-hmm. without the age, it's just James Williams, and you'll never be able to find exactly. this guy. Exactly. So, <laughs> we left you guys in the dust last week, mm-hmm. and we were talking a little bit about Todd Gurley and the Rams, and I wanted to do that on purpose for you guys, yeah. <laughs> making it a little bit of a cliffhanger for you guys, but I mean, week one is uh, is already done. It's, it's already done. It went by pretty quick, and, and to play off that cliffhanger there, I mean, it wasn't looking very good for Todd Gurley in the way... Um, the Rams kind of started off, at least on offense and whatnot. It picked up at the end, um, especially for fantasy football. As someone who owns Todd Gurley, the first thing I did after that game ended and saw that Malcolm Brown, the backup running back for the Rams, had two touchdowns early on in that game. Um, I believe it was two. He he was someone I was looking to pick up on the waiver wire for my fantasy football team. Make sure I wanted to make sure no one had him. So I'm looking to make sure I have him as a backup. I don't. We'll see going forward what the plan is for Todd Gurley. Um, he really did pick it up in the fourth quarter, which which was uh, made me kind of happy. Again, I started Todd Gurley. I think he was my first round pick, obviously. So um, wanted to make sure he's still getting production. I think he was. I think he had 97 yards, no touchdowns. So just shy of a hundred yard game, um, which is about what you would expect from your starting running back if you can get at least a hundred yards. That's pretty decent. Um, he was kind of on a pitch count. Again, like I was telling people all week, all weekend was for some this week one was a preseason game for the Rams starters because they did not play at all. It's been a while since they've been together. The last time they played meaningful snaps as a starting unit was the Super Bowl, and that was in February. So you're looking at quite a few months there. Um, So to see them kind of get it going, obviously picked up again in the fourth quarter. They were able to close that game out. the score ended up being a lot closer at the end mm-hmm. when, when all things were done with the Panthers, but um, I don't think there was ever for a second that you thought the Rams were going to really lose that game. Um, it was just more questions about what what's going on. Everyone seems very confident about the plan with Todd Gurley going forward. Um, but again, they're not just bouncing back to play against the New York Giants or the Dolphins. They're going to have to pick it up more from from wherever what level they were at they need to pick it up a little bit higher because they're playing against the new orleans saints and uh drew Brees. and that game um was the first of a doubleheader on monday night um that game went down to the wire and as you saw um coach sean payton and uh drew Brees are magicians they are oh, yeah. magicians the way oh, he yeah. they able to they were able to manage the clock do little passes down the field, do what they had to do, get themselves in position, and really put it all on their kicker to seal the deal and win the game for them in the final seconds against the Texans. So, that's uh, it's gonna be a real exciting game this coming weekend. It I mean, really Rams is. and it Saints, really is. and it's that one's gonna be. I I already feel like it's already a playoff preview between these oh, two. Yeah. Between these two ball clubs, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna be looking forward to that matchup for this weekend. Yeah, but. Definitely. One thing we didn't really talk about mm-hmm. was the early signing of Clay Matthews. When you saw yeah. him go into that the uniform, changing mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. blue and gold yeah, instead of having right. the green and the gold, green and gold right. how how was he in the locker room? Was he adapting well with the players? Since you spent three weeks, yeah, with the team? right. What did you see from him? Was he getting a, was he getting along with Aaron Donald too, or what was um, that like? You know what? It was kind of. First, tell me what is your impression of Clay Matthews? If if you see him, do you think he's a quiet guy, a loud guy? Well, do you think do you think you would notice him out on the field? Well, I feel like he's the type of guy. If he gets a sack, that's when he goes like the whole right. and right. then he goes all you know. He does like he goes crazy. But I feel like when he's in the locker room, that's when he's quiet. He is super low key. That I forgot he was even on oh, the team what? the first week I was there. <laughs> Super low key, like you, I, it, the the roster didn't change much from the Super Bowl, other than they added players who are pretty well known, like Eric Weddle and Clay Matthews. Um, so with that said, I mean, again, we talked about last week where I'm standing in front of this water uh, refrigerator cooler thing, and Aaron Donald's walking up, 
saying excuse me so he can get by. So you can't miss Aaron Donald. You can't miss some of those other big guys. But Clay Matthews was kind of off into the corner, kind of to himself. Uh, you had a row, a locker room row of, of the DBs, and they're loud. They were having a good time. Um, and I, th I think Clay Matthews might have even been in that row. So again, he was not. He wasn't really mingling. He wasn't being loud. Um, you know, you, it, it was almost, it's almost kind of fitting in a way that he's in L.A. In a way, because a lot of people might have even forgotten. I kind of almost did for a second. The Rams are playing in the Coliseum. That's where Clay Matthews made his name, more or less, with the USC and in that Coliseum. So he's right at home. I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but uh, talking with uh, Coach McVay and some of the, some of the other uh, veteran players, they speak highly of him. Um, I talked to Jalen Green, who was a... Um, he was at USC. He was a, a quarterback, switched over to a receiver, was at Utah State for a little bit, decided to transfer from USC. Um, I had a chance to talk to him. I asked him about someone like Clay Matthews because Clay Matthews actually walked by when I was interviewing Jalen Green. And I asked him, like, like if you just didn't know, that, like, Clay Matthews just walked by. That's someone where they shared a common bond uh, playing for USC, not at the same time, but... You know, I kind of even asked him, like, did you have you guys had a chance to like talk? Like, do you talk about your USC right. days and stuff? And he says a little bit, but they have they didn't really get too much into it. And again, I, I would credit a lot of that to Clay Matthews, um, not only being a quiet guy, but trying to figure out his role or where he's going to fit into this locker room because this is a new situation for him in the NFL. He'd always been with the Packers, never was with another team. He was drafted out of USC to the Green Bay Packers, so. He's just trying to play it cool, I think. He's being a wallflower. I mean, I, I would say he probably was always a wallflower, but more so than ever as he's trying to kind of figure out how this locker room is going to operate and how he can, can how he can contribute and be a positive influence and impact on, on the Rams and, and this roster. So, Well, I mean, this is a player that's so accustomed to being in mm -hmm. one locker room. He's been there for so many right. years with and, Green Bay. And, that, that's, and it's not like the Browns or the Panthers or some of these, like, the Browns aren't new, but I'm the the Panthers more so than anything are one of the newer franchises where there's not this history, this tradition, this culture that goes behind it. We're talking about the Green Bay Packers that have had Brett Favre and were coached by Lombardi back in the day and all this other, you know, Bart Starr and everything else. So there's a tradition, there's a history, there's a standard in Green Bay. Um, not to say that there isn't with the Rams, but I don't know if it's a culture shock, but it's going to be different, especially... It would almost be a lot different for him if he didn't play in L.A. and was familiar with L.A. I think he even grew up in Southern California, so he's no, he's back at home more than anything else. I'm sure it was almost more of a culture shock being in Wisconsin, which is a smaller, tight-knit community. So um, we'll see how he does. You know, he he's very to himself, but as long as he can still produce, I'm sure that the Rams are more than happy with what he's able to do. Um, if you want to transition over to some other roster additions, like I mentioned with Eric Weddle, did you see that hit? He took the Man, uh, he took a knee a knee to the wild. helmet and was busted open like he was in some MMA fight. That was crazy. I mean, I don't know how what caused the laceration that he had, but from what I understand, he went through the concussion protocol. I didn't hear word on whether or not he passed or not, but they said he had no symptoms that next day after the game. So everything was okay with him, and maybe we'll see him back on the field. Um, while at while Eric Weddle did go out, and I believe this was right before halftime, uh, Taylor Rapp, the rookie, stepped in. They think highly of him. He was their second-round pick, I believe. Um, I had a chance to talk with him, as I mentioned last week. He's a good guy, and he's looking forward to fitting in into this de defensive back unit that does have a lot of veterans like Tlaib, um, Roby Coleman, and... Um, Marcus Peters and, and Eric Weddle. So he's fitting in nicely. He's getting good reps with um, with Weddle sitting out that second half. We'll see what happens with Weddle. I'm sure they'll try and get Rapp more involved either way. So The defense, I would say, was a little quiet as well. I mean, the guy we were expecting to yeah. make some noise was Donald. Donald. Donald, and, Donald yeah. no sacks, no tackles yeah. whatsoever. He I could think he, not get through that O-line. I think he might have had one tackle. I think he might have been credited for, but... Again, yeah, it was a quiet night. You didn't hear a quiet day, I guess. But he didn't have his name called hardly at all. And and the thing you want to take away from that, though, is, like, numbers don't always tell you everything. So he may, you know, and I, I wouldn't, you know, a lot of the times I'm looking at the numbers, too. And if you don't see a sack or some tackles from Aaron Donald, you're thinking, 
Well, he didn't do anything. No, I'm sure he was still out there. I'm sure a lot of it had to be where they had a game plan against him and have double teams and whatnot because you can't just go one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Donald. It's not going to work out well. So I'm sure there was some double teaming there, which may have opened up some opportunities for some other guys. Um, so whether or not Aaron Donald is record recording any sort of statistics in a game, his presence is being felt. And, you know, I mean, he's... He's Aaron Donald. He's changing the game, whether it shows on the on the stat sheet or not. So, and even then, uh, it seemed like Carolina was really just mm -hmm. double teaming him and kind of just yeah. pushing him away. You so have it, was to. Just, it was just <laughs> you. It's not even enough mm -hmm. to get one mm -hmm. guy on him. It, oh that, yeah, that's just how I mean, much of a monster he oh, is. Oh, of course. And I mean, obviously, like I, again, I mentioned last week, his the players across the league think of him as the best player in the league, not only on defense but in the league. So they're double teaming him. They're you know you're trying to push him out of the way, but again, it, I mean if you're, and I don't blame him. I would try and push Aaron Donald out of the out of the way and have some someone else who's wide open try and come at me. I'd rather have someone else be wide open and trying to come at me than Aaron Donald, especially if you're trying to protect Cam Newton. Um, you know I, I think I think I, from what I was able to hear, I think the Carolina Panthers are being careful with Cam Newton as well. We didn't see him running the ball as much. I think he tried to stay in the pocket a little bit more, um, which, again, managed to work out if Aaron Donald's not getting after you. But, again, it you know, that early in the season, I think even guys like Cam Newton and stuff are a little rusty. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Saints and Rams yeah. going right off the get-go. We're going to go ahead and do these two superpower teams in the, mm -hmm. in the NFC. And, again, we're expecting a playoff atmosphere here in L.A., and luckily it's here in L.A., yeah. not like it's well, in New Orleans. But. Yeah, I'm, I'd be curious to know how that situation would go, and that doesn't mean it can't happen again at some point. Like you said, this is more or less playoff atmosphere, potential playoff preview. We might see these two teams again in the NFC Championship game, um, or you know, depending how the seedings and everything work out and how they make their journey through the playoffs. But, I mean, when you look at the matchup, Drew Brees and Jared Goff, I mean, they're not on the field at the same time. Um... Drew Brees, I mean, you almost want to say he's Drew Brees, and he he's he can have a good day any day. He can have really. a good day any day, and even with Aaron Donald and Clay Matthews on the field, you still got to think highly of Drew Brees and what he's going to be able to do. Um, you know, I'd give him I'd, when it comes to the two teams, I'd give the edge of quarterback. I'd give the quarterback edge to to the Saints in that regard. Um, Jared Goff is coming in with some confidence and a lot of money after after getting that deal taken care of. Um, so I'm sure he's in a good place right now. He's continuing to learn and get comfortable with Sean McVay and the Rams. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just that matchup alone, I'd give the edge to, the Bree to Drew Brees. Um, I don't know. Part of, me's almost, part of me almost thinks this might be a very one-sided game for some reason, and I don't know who. What? Who, really? I don't know. I just feel like it's super early. Like, I've been stressing, like, the Rams, like, okay, you're playing the Panthers. The Panthers are pretty good. You know, you kind of got those first-week jitters and, and that time that you didn't have when you played in the in the preseason, I, I want to know how they're going to respond this second time around. What is the plan going to be for Gurley? Um, I'd be curious to see what what the Saints come up with on defense. Are they preparing for Gurley? Are they now where they're obviously now aware of Malcolm Brown and what he's able to do? Um, so how does that game plan switch? What adjustments and audibles do they make when Gurley comes on for a series and then he's out for a whole nother series? Because there were times where, you know, they made it clear, like, this is Malcolm Brown's series right here, and Todd Gurley's getting a breather. So how are they going to handle that? How, how they will handle that and how uh, Sean Payton will draw that up for his defense to do what they need to do. So I'm curious. So there you have it, week two for the Rams against the Saints. Now let's cross over, not exactly cross over, but we're going to talk about the other L.A. football team. We're going to talk other, a little about the, the, the Chargers. The disrespect. On that, the other LA. <laughs> but, well, I mean, a lot of people are really going for the Rams. I talked to a lot no, of people. No, and that's hardly fair. ever. That's hardly fair. ever. That's that there's fair. people that's that are fair. Chargers fans. That's no fair. diss against that's the Chargers. Fair. No, or that's fair. No. So. Um, uh, so the Chargers have got some unfortunate news. Um, right before we got into the studio here, um, tight end Hunter Henry, who's the full time tight end, uh, they did bring in Antonio Gates back last year after um, Hunter Henry was injured around this same time last year. Um, I, he had a leg injury. No, he, it was like a leg or a foot injury. I'll call it up here in a little bit. But he's going to be out four to six weeks, um, which was weird. After the Sunday night game, um, Fred Rogan does his 
his show um, for the local news here in L.A. Um, right after that, right after that Sunday game, and Hunter Henry was on there. He was talking. They asked him. They said, "Hey, we noticed you limping. Uh, how is everything going? Like, is are you good?" And he said, "No, he was fine." He said he felt a little sore, but that just comes with um, playing football and the first week when you're really playing at a full speed. Um, so it didn't seem like there was much concern, but hearing the news today, he's going to be out four to six weeks. A little concerning. Uh, do the Chargers uh, reach out and do they call Antonio Gates again, or where, where do they go with the tight end position? So that's something we'll have to keep an eye out for. But um, other than that, I mean, the Chargers look pretty good. They they won. They won against so the Colts. They won against the Colts, and there was a lot of. Um, so I I was kind of looking forward to that game as well because as soon as you hear Andrew Luck's retiring and you look to see who they're opening the season against, it was against the Chargers. So. Um, it looked like the the Chargers that were almost same old Chargers there, and the you know they kind of let the Colts kind of get back into it a little bit, but they were on the winning end of it this time. So we got two teams in LA that are one and zero when it comes to professional football. You can't say the same thing about it, at least UCLA, um, USC. They got their quarterback situation going on, but just any anything else on the Chargers before before we might switch over to some other other football news. So I mean. I'm expecting I'm expecting a good year for both the Rams I am and too. With the Chargers. I, am too. I really think this is this is gonna be a really mm-hmm. good season for LA. I mean just overall LA football. I just yeah. really think this is gonna be a good year overall. But I know you're mentioning mm-hmm. a little bit about yeah. USC. I watched that game, Trojans and the Cardinals. USC and Stanford USC now taking rank number 24. I was kind of su- going into this I, year. I was kind of surprised that they got not really. I mean, when you think about it, uh, Stanford Stanford would, was ranked, I think they were 16. They were like in the middle of that top 25, I believe. Maybe a little lower. But um, of course, like I guess it makes sense for USC to be in, in the top 25 after knocking off a ranked team. But I'm surprised, or I'd want, I would want to know how much consideration was taken into. Uh, Stanford starting quarterback not being in that game. So uh, to me, that that had a lot to do with it. I'm not discrediting what USC was able to do, especially with a backup quarterback of their own in there. It's almost kind of wrong to, to call him a backup quarterback at this point um, after JT Daniels went down and is out for the season. Um, Slova- I'm still trying to remember, trying to like get familiar with his name. Like he's you know he's starting to grow on a lot of people in his name. I think it's like. Slovis? Slovis? I don't even remember if that's his first or last name. I think that's his last that's name. That's his last name. It's like Keaton, Keaton Slovis. Yeah. Slovis. Mm-hmm. He was a Kurt, he, he is a high school football coach was Kurt Warner, former Ram. Wow. Um, so, you know, but I don't think he was highly touted coming out. They kind of, you know, uh, everyone's trying to learn about the, the, the new USC quarterback. So they were like really giving his history out um, throughout the game saying, you know, he wasn't highly touted. He didn't have a lot of offers. Um, but he did uh, talk to his father, and they came up with uh, his dream schools, and USC was at the top of that list. So he's living out his dream right now. Um, USC fans are living out their dreams right now with USC being ranked and with uh, USC being able to bounce back and have a solid quarterback to kind of lead the way after JT Daniels went down. I don't know what it is about USC, but they just seem to always get the job done with freshman quarterbacks. They do, yeah. I mean, I'll give them credit, but I'm... The way they're starting to hype up uh, Slovis here, like, what happens when JT comes back? Like, like you, you're going to have two... Hey, that's a good problem to have. It's a good problem it's to have. Good problem to but have. if you've seen, and we've already seen it with uh, receiver Devon Williams, who anna- was it was announced he's going into the transfer portal, getting ready to leave USC. Um, you know, you had Kyle Ford coming back and, and adding depth to that uh, receiving core which is already considered one of the best in the Pac-12 and maybe one of the best in college football. So I mentioned Jalen Hurts a minute ago. Um, he's actually coming to town. He's coming to the, not well, not Long Beach, but he's coming to Pasadena and the Rose Bowl. They're playing the UCLA the UCLA Bruins and uh, and Chip Kelly and, and everything they have going on there, which isn't the best situation. And I don't think the fans are very happy with the 0-2 start for the Bruins. I believe what I've heard is uh, UCLA is giving out free tickets. Whoa, yeah, what? I don't know. I don't know if you saw like even the 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 um, a shot in the rolls. Well, I think actually my colleague uh, Chuck Nini Win tweeted it out where the upper deck and stuff was rather empty. So I believe either tickets are really cheap and they're pretty much near free, or they are free, one or the Whoa, other. Which is kind of which is kind of crazy, especially like I said, 
Jalen Hurts, who won a, a national championship at Alabama, transferred um, from Alabama to Oklahoma, and had a pretty good performance last week. Oklahoma is for real. I don't see UCLA doing very much. I think they're going to get blown out. And so, if I'm a fan, I wouldn't want to come either. Cause if, like, if you're a true fan and you're expecting to see a win, you're not going to get a win. I'll tell you right now. Watch. No, they, no watch, deal. Watch. They're going to like shock the world and I'm going to have to eat crow. But, oh, man. But, well, but I'm, I'm sticking <laughs> with it. I think, I think Jalen Hurts is just going to run up and down the Rose Bowl field and destroy the Bruins. That's just me. I'm just saying. We'll have to wait and see for that <laughs> matchup as well. But James... Yesterday, yes. the Dodgers, yes, the first did. one to clinch a playoff mm -hmm. spot this year. Yes. The first team. But the big news, making it seventh consecutive mm -hmm. National League West yeah. title. And this is just, what a squad that the Dodgers have this year. What a squad. I would not get comfortable yet, though. Like, I feel baseball is kind of weird because they, like, they were celebrating and they the champagne was going all over the place. Like, they won the World Series. It's not even October yet, so it's like... But wait, there's still work that needs to be done, though, James. That's Remember, what I'm saying. Like, that's what there's I'm saying. still a lot of work. That's what I'm saying. The, like, it's... Where there's still a lot of work. Like, like You not, can't celebrate too early. We're not talking about even talking about the World Series yet, James. Right, right, We're right. still talking about the Dodgers being down, the Astros and the Yankees well, for home field saying. advantage. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, okay, maybe you have home field advantage for against the National League, mm -hmm. but you don't have it yeah. against the, your American right, League opponent right, right. in the World Series. So, it, yeah, it's just hard to get comfortable. It's hard. To, I'm not a fan of any specific team, but if I'm a, if I were to be a Dodger fan, I would not be satisfied just because you've made it to the World Series the last two years and did not win. And you had this same hype, this same, yeah, the Dodgers are looking good. You know, they won the National League West again and again and again, but it's like, I need to see it first. I need to see a World Series victory. Even then, like, when you saw uh, Caleb Ferguson get the mm -hmm. strikeout against the final out mm -hmm. over there at Baltimore, it just looked like the guys are already high five. All right, good job, right, good right, job. Right, Everybody's right. already just like that. They really didn't start celebrating once everybody was once. in there. They, they took their time. Yeah, they, even yeah. got, they even got Alex Verdugo on the yes, phone, Max Muncy on the phone, and then it was like, all right, and then you can just hear, like, it's, it took so long, you mm -hmm. just heard a couple pops, like, hey, wait a minute, but, wait, but, don't pop yet, but, don't pop the champagne. But what I love about that though is is that shows how together they are and how patient they are like and, and how thoughtful they are and how you know where this team is and for Dave Roberts to say I don't know I I guess he's down with technology I didn't know he knew, would know what FaceTime was <laughs> but he's like FaceTime for Dugo and and, and he, was the, one saying it, yeah. he was the one leading that charge and again that's what you would expect from your leader from your your manager so to for him to kind of have control of that team, even when they're ready to celebrate and still be able to manage that whole situation the way he did, I think that is a great example of where this team is and what might make the difference for them to get over the hump this year. Here, James, let's talk about the serious business right now, though. I know the Dodgers, their main situation and mm -hmm. their the main concern always seems to be the arms. It looks yeah. like these next couple of games, maybe like the, these last two weeks of the season, we're expecting the, the Dodgers really to shuffle the deck and really see, okay, who are going to be our solid starting five, starting four maybe? It looks like it's a guaranteed Ryu, Bueller, and Kershaw, yeah. which leaves mm -hmm. the final spot or two maybe even open, which they're still really, they're really trying mm -hmm. to see. Who's going to be that final spot? Is it Maeda? Is it Urias? Is it going to be yeah. Gonsolin? Is it going to be Dustin May? And even then, like, you put Gonsolin on that mm -hmm, final spot, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you still have a good bullpen pieces, I yeah. believe, with like Urias, with Maeda. Maeda came in and threw four mm -hmm. innings against the Giants over the weekend. Right. And I really think these are going to be the moves that you have to make. Getting guys that are in the rotation, yeah. move them into the bullpen, but you can't just throw them in there. They need time they to do. make that right, right, to right. be converted because a starter... You get time to right. warm up. They yeah. say, "Hey, uh, games at you three o'clock." You know, you know, you're going in. Exactly. You know when. You know, you you know. So those like the first three pitchers you mentioned there, they know. They they know like what what days they are on, what days they're to rest. Some of these other guys are like, "Okay, well, Kershaw's not doing that hot. Go get yeah. out there, go get him." And you're like, "Okay." Yep. So they got to warm up on the fly. 
I just part of me is like I just feel like when, as as the the postseason goes along, someone's gonna get hurt. Someone's gonna you know I feel like it happens all the time. Someone's gonna get hurt. It's gonna change up. You might Kershaw might struggle or something. It it always happens. We might see Kershaw pitch game three of the World Series and then he has to come in for game four or something to try and get out, get him out of a jam at the end of game four or something. It it just I don't know. It's like you just can't prepare. Like I just feel like you should. I'm not a baseball expert, so don't get me wrong. I'm, if I was, I'd be hired by a team, but I'm not. <laughs> but if me, I would want to be very careful the next few weeks and make sure you get into the postseason with some healthy guys, some healthy arms, especially from those top arms like Kershaw and uh, Bellinger and whoever else you need to have healthy. Here's my thing, though. I'm not concerned too much about Kershaw because Kershaw has other arms that can back him up. Ryu, he had a phenomenal first half. Yeah, he did. I say some of the second right. half, it looks like he's beginning to reality starting to catch mm -hmm. up to him, and like baseball is actually yeah. trying to starting to catch up to him, and it's just uh, his ERA is going he's, up a little bit. He's kind of come start, a little back to down to earth a little bit, which which is exp I mean, you start off so hot, you can't stay hot the whole season. Exactly. But, I mean, maybe during the middle. Maybe you're seeing a little bit of that decline now, but maybe that it will kind of pick back up and level off a little bit when you need him most, maybe. But here's the thing. Kershaw has other arms that he could depend on. He yeah. has Ryu. He has Bueller he could turn into. He even has, like, these young phenoms that can really that he can turn to in Gonsolin or mm -hmm. even May. Mm -hmm. I Personally, I think that last spot should go to Gonsolin instead of May. I think May is more of a reliever with that mm -hmm. high velocity that he has. It's but, a lot of movement, right? but it's just I feel he I feel like he should be more of a bullpen piece and have being responsible for five innings of work. I mean, I I feel better with Gonsolin. Mm -hmm. Gonsolin, even then against the Yankees, that kid was yeah. dealing against the yeah. Yankees on that Saturday game. Mm -hmm. Kept them, he shut them out and kept them quiet. You know. Yeah, and that was no. It actually wasn't a shutout. It was actually a home run against Aaron Judge. But I mean, that's Judge. Like, uh, yeah, Judge I mean, is, is a yeah, monster. I mean, I mean, yeah. You, what do you? What do you, I mean? If you, uh, hey, I'll give up a, a run to, to Judge, no problem. I mean, it's like you're gonna win some and lose some. Again, going back to that's like Aaron Donald's. Like, okay, yeah, he got past me. Like you, you know, you just gotta try and hold them off as long as you can, you know. But it, it's gonna happen. They're good. They're talented. Um, you just don't want to have that same mindset when you get into the postseason. So, I don't know. I'm, 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 I just need to see it first. I, I'm just, after the first two years of them making the World Series and not winning it, I'm just kind of hesitant to, like, and it just goes I need back, to see it. It goes back with it's, the whole meme of the whole State Farm, the old man with the fishing rod. Oh, you almost had it. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's just all the Dodger fans like, oh, man, that, yeah, that, that's pretty cold. But, you know, Let's look at the National mm -hmm. League as well. I mean, there's a lot of competition in there. I mean, they have to deal with the Braves. They're going to have to deal with the Cardinals. Whoever wins the mm -hmm. wild card, because you know the National League every year. Yeah. It's, just, it's amazing to watch. It's just teams that are like a game, a two games, three mm -hmm. games, four and a half games that are in it's the mix, crazy. always in the wild card. And that's what makes September baseball mm -hmm. so amazing. But we could definitely expect the Dodgers to be playing against maybe the Nationals mm -hmm. or the Cubs. Or mm -hmm. if the Cubs all of a sudden fall out out of the map and it's the Brewers that take that spot it would be a Brewers and a and a Nationals game but I still feel like the Nationals would even win that which means maybe the Nationals would play the Dodgers mm -hmm. but even then like you can't even sleep on the Nationals just because of yeah. that rotation is just filthy even with uh, going back to the Brewers for a second if Christian Yelich went down uh, yesterday with a broken kneecap yeah. so having him out you know will kind of set the Brewers back I would think at least a little bit so We'll see how that all plays out. But, yeah, the Nationals and their rotation, pretty solid. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just think it all falls on the Dodgers. I feel like the Dodgers are the ones. They just they just hurt themselves. Like, it's just, I don't know. I just, I need to see it. I, I can't get too excited. Sorry, Dodger fans. I can't, <laughs> I can't get too excited about it just because I don't know. And you, you just hope they don't, like, lose in the first series or something, the opening series of the postseason. And you could just tell that, like, the Dodgers, they, they've they already done it. This is seven straight right, times. Right, right. You've like been there, done that. Right. And they, they've already been there. They've already done it before. So they're not even, mm -hmm. they're not, like, they're excited. Yes, they're excited that Be they have excited, a, a playoff spot. But have that mindset of there's more work to do. And I think when you have guys like Justin Turner and all that in, in, the, in the, the clubhouse and whatnot, they're aware. They know what the situation is. And uh, Kershaw, he needs to get a ring. 
There it is. He, he needs to, to get a ring before before it's, it's you know it it's not too late. it's getting it's before getting kind of close. Late. So they it, need to make it happen. So Kershaw needs to step it up. The rest of the team needs to step it up for Kershaw and some of those other guys. There's not a lot of time left. So, so. the Dodgers. The the thing that they kept saying was three more, three more, three mm -hmm. more celebrations, and that's what the Dodgers are out to do but remember they still have to take care of business at Baltimore and then they actually have a homestand two games against the Rays then it would be the final I believe four games against mm -hmm. the Rockies which would be their final homestand which season's already almost finished yeah. postseason's almost around the corner but that's, that's just, just be healthy so unfortunately James we are out of time we are it's, it's I know it, it I felt like we bar we just barely started we, we really did there's good. so much more we could have talked about just want to throw it out there uh, USC did fire their AD, or he resigned. Lin Swan, so USC is looking for a um, new AD. So again, so we could have spent so much time just talking about that alone. So much stuff going on, but I know we're out of time. So. But SoCal sports is just always, or there's always buzz going on there here in something. SoCal. But we just had to cover the big news mm -hmm. that were going on around SoCal. But again, James, thank you so much for coming on. No again, Thanks I know we were me. leaving we were leaving the viewers in the dark just talking about Gurley and they kind of just shutting it down. Yeah. But, uh, Can I get a quick prediction? I think we, we did we do predictions last week. Are, the Rams or Saints? Rams you, or Saints? Rams or Saints. Where are you going? I'm trusting the Rams. I'm trusting in the Rams. I, I just think Goff is going to be throwing dimes. I mean, he was throwing dimes last week, except for that one pick that um, that he threw. But, I mean, I'm really trusting in him. I, I think it's going to be really close. No, it, don't get me wrong. It's going to be so close. I really think this is going to be one of those games where you're going to have the TV press right, in front right, of your right, face right, type right, right, of right. thing. I really think that's how it's going to be. But... I have, I have faith in the Rams because I really think that home faithful is going to stand behind yeah, him. Yeah, that's and true. Such, and I just really think that it, the Rams are going to just barely, just by a hair, come up top. I think the Rams will win. I just I just put it in my mind that I think the Rams are going to win because I think you're going to get an angry Aaron Donald who, after you heard people say, well, he didn't get a sack or a tackle, two sacks for Aaron Donald this week, and the Rams will beat the Saints. That's going to be pretty tough to have to go through Matthews and to go through Donald right yeah, there. And there. Yeah, it'll be tough, but, you know, I, I think the Saints will keep it close. But I, the Rams, that that defense, I think they'll be able to, to maintain and manage what Drew Brees is able to do. So. so you're saying Rams. I'm going with the Rams. I'm saying, I'm not only saying the Rams, I'm saying Aaron Donald will have two sacks in this game. So you're going yeah. with the Rams defense. Yeah, I'm going, I'm, we are, that's, that's what I'm basing the... Because, I mean, I'm not going to go with the Rams offense when you got Drew Brees on the other side. But, yeah, Aaron Donald, I, I think he's going to be a little little angry after people, I don't want to say they're counting him out, but there's a little little cloud of like, hmm, what happened there? Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. I am Alex Naveja, and again, this is James H. Williams, J.H.W. Reporter. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a good day. Thank you.